I decided to present this because um, sorry, no, sorry. Um, I'd been reflecting on why over the past 16 years I continued to enjoy coming to work, which sounds a bit old, but, um, but also always in my staff, annual staff review, I've always said I keep enjoying coming to work, despite you know, the very challenging nature of our work and um, you know, at times the very distressing situations we um, actually witness. And also the other part is why our staff at MND Victoria has also been there for such extended periods, not quite 16 years, but um, yeah. So what is it about MND Victoria that attracts and maintains its staff? I'd also throughout the presentation like to encourage you to consider what your culture of care is in your workplace. So what do we mean by culture of care? It's the provision of a supportive working environment where people feel supported and connected, respected. It's a trusting environment um, which provides open communication. We care for people in very sad and serious circumstances and um, you know this is obviously very challenging. So staff in a where a culture of care exists, staff are encouraged to problem solve, to address issues and are permitted to debrief. And David mentioned that earlier that even the most experienced doctors and medical staff can still feel very challenged. By providing, a, by providing a, a focus on staff health, people work better, they stay longer, and they want to come to work. So staff are encouraged to care for themselves so we can continue to care for others. It's a bit of a cliche, but it's very true, isn't it? We all have the same goals with, at MND Victoria. We want people to live better for longer, and that's, um, that's throughout. So the rationale for a culture of care. Because of the, at times, challenging nature of our work, the flow and effect of workers means that the organisation needs to be supportive and understanding of staff. And that staff need to be caring for themselves. Heads Up, which is an Australian first campaign um, launched by Beyond Blue, I'm sure you've all heard of that, and the Mentally Health Workplace Alliance, Heads Up was a recent survey just uh, done in June this year, and it revealed that workplace mental health is ranked second only to pay as the most important factor when choosing a job. To quote Jeff Kennett, who's the chairman of Beyond Blue, it makes good business sense to have people look forward to going to work in a place where they are respected, where they're treated well, and they're not overloaded with work and expected to meet impossible deadlines. This uh, this can lead to ongoing stress, which can develop into depression and anxiety. So if there is a good level of, a, a good culture of care, this means that there's a high staff retention. The organisation is not losing its professional skills and knowledge, and there's continuity for clients. Healthy workplaces attract and keep the most, keep the best and most talented people. So a quick um, background about MND Victoria. Um, we have 361 clients living with motor neuron disease as at June this year. We're a statewide service and we pro provide a range of services, um, information, volunteers, regional advisors and the equipment library. We have 18 staff, eight full-time, 10 part-time. Five of the regional advisors work solo they're actually um, in regional centres working by themselves so they don't have um, other people around them from MND Victoria. Um, it can be high stress work and I guess by what I mean by that is it can be emotionally stressful. This diagnosis is stressful. Um, also resources we all know such as funding and wait lists they're always an issue and a challenge. So how has MND Victoria created a culture of care? Well, on the formal side of things, we have state council. Um, 
who over, oversee our organisation, which oversees our organisation, has uh, 12 people on it, um, two thirds of whom have had some experience either personally or professionally with motor neuron disease. So state, man state council and management um, policy and practices have evolved over the years as a commitment to support all staff. Um, the communication is transparent and consultative and we have a relatively flat organisational <laughs> structure, really only about three levels. And because there's only 18 people in our organisation, um, it is relatively flat. Um, the creating a culture of care comes from the top down. So the policies and practices that State Council and management um, have put in place, it's re reflected in, in the very first interview of people. So how do you actually care for yourself is one of the questions that is um, asked of new employees. There's also an insistence on taking annual leave um, to re-energise yourself. We also have um, RA days, which regional advisor days were um, once, once every two months, and family support days, where all staff get together, um, and that's once a month, to um, just look at how we're going and um, you know, we have an agenda and um, it's, it is an opportunity for debriefing and discussing our practice. And we have annual performance reviews. How do you think you are going and what would you like to achieve? They're the questions that are asked. So it's, it is all about us at that time. Um, we have a, tr a training, a professional training budget for each staff member that people can um, undertake professional development of their own choice. Um, so there might be different seminars, conferences and so on, workshops. There is some compulsory training, for example, defensive driving course and first aid. And these are all fully funded by the organisation. Um, there's flexible working arrangements. So childcare and supporting unwell family, etc. we all understand and, and management understands um, the need for, you know, maybe changing days of work and so on. Um, and one thing I've always noticed too, when I first started, I thought I'm going to have to be attending all these fundraising events on weekends and balls and whatever, but there has never been any pressure to or expectation to attend these. Of course, many of us do because we want to, but it certainly isn't an expectation. So, as I've said, State Council supports all these initiatives and um, we get those messages very clearly. Continuing on the, the formal side of things, um, we also have, David mentioned this before, the opportunity to debrief. Um, on the formal side, we have access to 10 counselling sessions a year. Um, that again is paid fully by the organisation. Um, it can be a counsellor of our own choice and it can be, um, we can go in our work time, whatever suits us. Um, we have individual monthly supervision with our manager of family support. Some people like to walk and talk, so walk in the local park and talking to Julie, our manager. Um, our family support manager will also travel to outposted RAs who, you know, or meet halfway if they're um, you know, a number of hours away. And there's always regular telephone calls and emails and that sort of contact. Uh, the group Supervision bi-monthly, I mentioned that earlier, where we have an external facilitator who comes in and it's a peer support, but she facilitates the discussion about any concerns. And that's, that's available for, certainly the RAs, we meet every two months and all other staff, it's once or twice a year. Um, also, attendance at conferences is paid for, um, obviously, this one today, and there's 15 of us here today, so our organisation is very keen for us to, you know, continue to better our practice and to present. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, the international conference, people can apply that, um, for that to uh, attend. We've certainly all been to the, the one in Sydney and Melbourne. I was lucky enough to go to the one in Birmingham a number of years ago. 
I'd really like to go to Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't put my application early enough. And the closure of the office between Christmas and New Year is an acknowledgement by State Council of the difficult and challenging nature of the work that we do. So this is not part of our annual leave. It's a given for all staff. Informally, we have a culture of care. Um, I think everyone feels that it's a trusting and respectful work environment. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, um, and it's a very welcoming, welcoming and caring work environment. I'm often struck when we do have new members, uh, new um, people come to work for us, and they they do their um, they do the rounds with us all and, and hear, hear what our roles are, etc. But people are um, new new staff members are always say how welcoming and friendly we are, which I think is great. But I, I think it's given. But often people say, but my last workplace was never like this. It was all very almost competitive or not as comfortable. So it's a really interesting thing because I think it's just given that we should be a caring work environment. Um, we have regular staff lunches and our Christmas staff lunch is um, subsidised by the organisation as well. And we have the rest of the day off, which is really nice. And certainly other... Um, you know, special occasions and, and um, recognition of birthdays and so on um, happens and, you know, deaths in the family or accidents, etc. They're all acknowledged by the, the whole staff. So what are the challenges of maintaining a culture of care? It may be that new staff have different expectations, as I just um, described. There may be changes in state council members. Um, and um, yeah, the, because the organisation is getting bigger, I mean, we'd all rather be out of a job, I'm sure, but um, you know, that, that's, that's a challenge in itself to make sure that the new people uh, do feel comfortable and that this is our culture. Um, and of course, making the time and the financial commitment um, is, is ongoing. Um, Sorry, um, it also ensuring that the staff initiate support for their own needs, that they are aware and, and, and they have permission to look after themselves. So outcomes of a culture of care is that it's high quality and effective service delivery. Um, we know from our annual survey of clients and, um, and service providers that we provide a high quality service and that many other organisations um, do regard that the work that we do is very significant. The majority of the feedback from these surveys is, is positive. And I haven't got any facts or figures here, but we just, I know that from my information officer. Um, it is, a, um, staff stay with us. Um, at, um, at June, in June 14, that, um, the facts were that, um, staff retention rates were 7.7 .7 years average length of employment, which is quite significant in this challenging field. Um, and also the outcomes are that it reduces uh, educational, co uh, educa organisational costs so that, um, you know, intellectual capital is retained, prof professional skills uh, stay within the organisation. And I think this is also reflected in our sick leave. It's only 2.8 days per person per year, which is quite remarkable. So the take home message, um, creating a culture of care promotes staff wellbeing. It produces better outcomes for clients. If people are feeling secure and trusted um, with their regional advisors and other MND staff, it can, that can only be a good thing. It reduces organisational costs and it needs to be constantly nurtured and reviewed. So I guess we were also wondering if there was anything in your organisation that um, you were doing that I haven't mentioned um, that works for you. But I think it's just important to take that bit of time out to reflect on your own as, as carers, our own needs. 
Um, this is just what I've mentioned before, the Heads Up organisation and Beyond Blue. And of course, what conference would it be without a lunic cartoon? But this one was quite, quite cute, I thought, as far as it being very simple to re-energise yourself. Can you all read that, by the way? Thank you.